Howdy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lesson 74. There is no will but God's. Are you sure? Positive. <laughs> the idea for today can be regarded as the central thought toward which all our exercises are directed. God's is the only will. When you have accepted this, you have recognized that your will is his. The belief that conflict is possible has gone. Peace has replaced the strange idea that you are torn by conflicting goals. As an expression of the will of God, you have no goal but his. Really just feels like that's the end of all you know, duality or wanting anything in addition to God or wanting to see things that God hasn't created. It is, it's just an undivided singular desire to know God's will. And, and in that recognizing, oh my gosh, that is my will. It is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, what just came in then and I'm looking at it going, I don't know if I should share this or not. Trust I'm it. not sure. What's that? Trust it. Trust it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in order to know there is no will but God's, um, there's an idol that we all, um, what would the word be? We all um, protect and defend that has to be given over to Holy Spirit to be divinely repurposed. And it's huge because most of us, when we start off on the journey, don't even recognize it. And we think that it is part of God, God's will. You know what it is? The idea of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So now we, through the ego mind, believe that love is sacrifice that in order to attain love, recognition, accolades, approval, yes. validation, yes. and it goes on and on and on, we need to sacrifice something. Yeah. All right? So, you know, that's the ego. That's the ego. And the ego um, believing that its projection of its God with a little g uh, is going to ask of us great sacrifice if we go with God's will, right? But the truth is that there is no sacrifice in God. God never, ever asks to sacrifice because or our minds are one. Communication is one. It is broken by fear. Yeah. Sacrifice is a form of fear. Okay, so when we sacrifice, we see it's like private thoughts. I mean, what I'm saying here is is when we sacrifice, we in the ego's thought system, we can't sacrifice alone. It's not like I can sacrifice for you, mm -hmm. and and um, and you not share in that sacrifice because. Okay. You know, if I'm going to sacrifice myself for you, you're going to pay for it. And so am I. Sure. Because we're one. Yeah. Yes. Right? So wow. it's a huge, huge, huge idol. Mm -hmm. That's why I wasn't sure whether, whether to share it in this lesson or not. But no. it came in booming and I was like, oh, why me? Oh, okay. All right. So let's share it. Yeah. And, um, we can just can hold on just a second I just saw something as you were speaking about that you know I was thinking that you were going to say the body or something but really you know because this world doesn't know of divine love and its highest teaching about love which is what the special relationship of maybe partners romantic partners or parent child there is so much sacrifice ingrained in that so-called love and we all know people pleasing or you know having to go out and get a job and and work to provide for the family I mean there's always this 
sacrifice, 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 and we call that good, and we call that love. And so when we consider God as love, and we want to uh, um, accept God's will, there's going to be tremendous expectation of sacrifice in that relating with God, even turning towards God, we're going to be just, you know, quivering, thinking, what, what is this going to cost me? Mm -hmm. But, but the world doesn't know the kind of love that loves lavishly with no expectations. There is no sacrifice in God. And we have no idea what that means. But again, in holy relationship, that's what's extended. I don't want anything from you. I'm not demanding anything from you. I don't have a, a hidden ulterior motive. I'm not here to manipulate or give to get. I'm here to simply shine, right? With you, seeing you, um, extending truth with you, knowing the truth with you. Yeah, extending that, that perfect love. So, right. Mm -hmm. We're going to be afraid of God's will until we're really willing to understand, to accept that God's love doesn't require sacrifice. And yeah. you won't, you won't yeah. ever trust that unless you've experienced it in relationship with the brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Thank you. So that's beautifully explained. Um, and so when we take this lesson in fully, there is no will but God's. Uh, what we're actually asking Holy Spirit is to help um, uh, to, uh, what's a word for it, uh, to unearth mm -hmm. areas that we've been falsely sacrificing in order to gain what we thought was love, yeah. right? Right. So this, I, and I bring this up because now a memory has just come in, which is um, around this lesson, maybe, I'm not quite sure, but uh, vaguely around this lesson, uh, I was in um, a, quite a toxic relationship back then. And uh, mind you, it healed and became a holy relationship, which is totally miraculous. But back then in the early days, um, the whole idea of sacrifice around this lesson, that came up for me. And I got to see in my relationship with my significant other, how much I was sacrificing. And Holy Spirit in my mind was showing me all these areas, you know, like I was cooking seven nights a week. Mm. I was doing things that I was not happy with in the relationship. And so I saw, wait a minute, this is not love. I'm not being kind, not to my partner or to myself or to the Holy Spirit. And so there was a process, a beginning process of Holy Spirit helping me undo all of that in the relationship. So it's good. I'm just flagging this in yeah, case that's great. anybody else might have this experience as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Because one thing important to remember is if I'm sacrificing for you, mm -hmm. I'm going to resent the hell out of you. Exactly. That's exactly right. When you are talking about your relationship, that just, that's the breeding ground of resentment oh. and, score, and scorekeeping. It's scorekeeping. That's exactly right. Anyway, we're getting off topic, maybe. All right. <laughs> <Going too far. laughs> no, I think it's good just to notice the, the, the fear and the resistance of accepting that there is no will but God. Let's just flag that and bring it up to say, you know, the ego, of course, is terrified of the will of God, but we are addressing, you know, the holy self. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Um, um, am I reading? I'm sorry. Yes, you are. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who's hey. on first? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is great peace in today's idea. And the exercises for today are directed toward finding it. The idea itself is wholly true. Therefore, it cannot give rise to illusions. Without illusions, conflict is impossible. Let us try to recognize this today and experience the peace this recognition brings. Begin the longer practice periods by repeating these thoughts several times, slowly and with firm determination to understand what they mean and to hold them in mind. 
there is no will but God's. I cannot be in conflict. Then spend several minutes in adding some related thoughts, such as, I am at peace. Nothing can disturb me. My will is God's. My will and God's are one. God wills peace for his son. During this introductory phase, be sure to deal quickly with any conflict thoughts that may cross your mind. Tell yourself immediately, there is no will but God's. These conflict thoughts are meaningless. If there is one conflict area which seems particularly difficult to resolve, single it out for special consideration. Think about it briefly, but very specifically. Recognize the particular person or persons and the situation or situations involved and tell yourself, there is no will but God's. I share it with him. My conflicts about the person or situation cannot be real. After you have cleared your mind in this way, close your eyes and try to experience the peace to which your reality entitles you. Sink into it and feel it closing around you. There may be some temptation to mistake these attempts for withdrawal, but the difference is easily detected. If you are succeeding, you will feel a deep sense of joy and an increased alertness rather than a feeling of drowsiness and innervation. Innervation? Hmm. Joy characterizes peace. By this experience, will you recognize that you have reached it? If you feel yourself merely slipping off into withdrawal, quickly repeat the idea for today and try again. Do this as often as, ne as is necessary. There is definite gain in refusing to allow retreat into withdrawal, even if you do not experience the peace you seek. In the shorter practice periods, which should be undertaken at regular and predetermined intervals today, say to yourself, there is no will but God's. I seek his peace today. Then try to find what you are seeking a minute or two every half hour with eyes closed if possible, would be well spent on this today. There is no will but God's. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Imagine if we all knew that in every now moment. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for me, it's not a matter of not accepting this is true. And I've had direct experience that it is. And now it's a matter of just the discipline of watching when there's ever a temptation to think that, you know, there's something else apart from God's will or in addition to it. Coming back, coming back, there is no will but God's and there's no conflict in God's will. Yeah, and, and um, yeah, that inspires me to bring up a couple of audio blogs as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, actually, the audio and their print. And I think in the first one, there's a very, very um, helpful uh, diagram. And that, that the first blog is called Awakening, Separating Truth from Illusions. This mm -hmm. is, it's a discipline that we, we have to do. Um, yeah in order to know God's will and know that we are God's will and nothing but God's will. So it's awakening, separating truth from illusions. I think the diagram's in that one. And the, the, the second blog is equally as important and it's titled Making the Positive Separation Between Body mm -hmm. and Spirit. That's you my favorite. Yeah, you won't find that in any new age teaching, by the way. 
What did you say, sis? Sorry. That's my, that's my favorite blog. That is so amazing. And it was so powerful. And uh, it's always a go to. And you're right. It is what sets these teachings apart from any other path. But it is completely supported by what Jesus says in the course and, um, and scriptures. So yeah. I love it. I love it. Yep. And again, if you're not tech savvy, we're going to repeat this again. Uh, the down below on YouTube, Mm -hmm. there's there is a description uh, what do you call description or mm -hmm. show more area right and um we have somebody that's helping to actually put these links mm -hmm. right there at the top for various videos like today's video um lesson 74 and you'll find those two blogs the links to them when you look in the, descri the description box that's right. Yes. <laughs> I'll get real good at this after a while. And so will they, you know, it's, it, it's only difficult to find it at first, but once you start to locate what we're referring to, it's yeah. easy peasy. So yeah. And you, if you can't find it on your phone, <laughs> which took me a couple of weeks, um, go to a desktop computer or a laptop yeah. or whatever you should find it on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. So there's going to be this pull from the ego to accept that God's will is true, but yet also what you're dealing with as a problem is also true. And we do this kind of, a, we talked about the pendulum going back and forth and every one of us, every single one of us has to come to a place where we're willing to make a positive separation, where it's just the truth is true and nothing else is true and be solid in your conviction that nothing else is true and so recognizing honoring god's will worshiping god alone saying only god's will is true um and these blogs please you know read the blogs listen to the blogs they're really going to anchor this and we've got to do it at some point you know in our awakening so why not now so i just want to encourage you guys these are really powerful powerful blogs and they'll help anchor this and make it part of your process yeah and um and for those thanks sis and for those who want to go deeper into this again mm -hmm. chapter two of the text we both encourage you to, to read the text yes it, it just um it it really supports the lessons you know or the lessons support the text yeah um but in chapter two there's a section in there about true denial and uh, even if you just read that, support this lesson mm -hmm. and to support these um, two blog posts as well. It's going to be very, very helpful. Oops, I left my phone on. <laughs> that's a good sign. Thank you. Jesus saying okay. yes. No, that was Jesus calling me. Hang on that's a minute. <laughs> we'll wait while you take this call. Oh, it's oh look, it is him. Look. <gasps> oh, <I love> that. <laughs> beautiful. Thanks, sis. <laughs> All right, okay. you guys. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you, see you next time. Bye. Bye.